Hey guys, Al Lake Pierce Scuba, another tech tip. Here I am, I'm gonna take this mask off, uh, only because I'm about 15 feet from anybody, and, uh, and um, they're all family anyway, and uh, so I can talk to you a little better, you can recognize me. Al Lake Pierce Scuba, tech tips, and here we are back at my old Alma Mater. Is that what this is? This is my old Alma Mater, Scuba 2000, in, in uh, Toronto, uh, Richmond Hill, Ontario, in Toronto and uh, the dive store that uh, my dear wife and I built 20 some odd years ago and biggest and best and still looking beautiful, still looking, the Scuba 2000, yeah. So anyway, uh, the reason we're here today is a, a couple of reasons. First of all, I have some videos to make that require a pool and Scuba 2000 has without a doubt the best indoor pool for scuba training anywhere that I've seen. Not only is it beautiful, but it's warm and it's available 24 hours a day, and all kinds of pool things. And so we're gonna do some stuff in the pool. You'll see some of my videos coming up where we actually test some neat products in the pool. That's why I'm here today. But why were we here? We were talking, I was talking with Guy, the manager here at Scuba 2000, and, and, and I, had, I was asking him, so how is the current situation with the COVID, with the virus, how is it affecting how you run the business? And, and he explained to me that, boy, there's a lot of things. The, the, the Department of Health here in Ontario is pretty strict. And they came in and they spent three hours measuring and writing down things and all kinds of recommendations. So I said, holy jump on. Well, how do you train students? Well, uh, and so that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to just very quickly run you through the process of becoming a scuba diver during the COVID. How's that? How to, be a, how to become a scuba diver during the COVID. There's a good title. So we're going to put a little scenario on right here. I'm going to have a, a new student walk in the front door and Guy, the manager, I'm going to introduce Guy in just, in just a moment to you. Uh, he's going to take the new student through the steps. And we're going to go actually right into the classroom. We're going to see the classroom and the pool and everything that's been done. This is being done for two reasons. So you can understand what's being done. And secondly, if there's anybody out there who is interested in becoming a, becoming a scuba diver, we want to instill some confidence in you that may be better than the bars and even the patios and the schools and other things that are opening up, that becoming a scuba diver during the COVID is perfectly safe. That's, the, that's what we want to get. And you'll understand after we do this with you. Now, first of all, Kevin, can you, can you go over here and, and, and talk to Guy for just a second? I've been wanting to do this for a long time. You've, I think most of you folks have heard me talk about Guy in the past. This is Guy Pelland, who is, uh, is an old, old friend. I think we've known each other for over 40 years. And in the last uh, 10 or 15 years, we've become very close friends. And uh, Guy uh, has a wide, wide field of experience in scuba diving. Spent years and years in Grand Cayman running one of the dive boats and underwater photographer there and, and uh, teaching and training and dive store, all that. He's, he's worked in a couple of the biggest dive stores in, in Canada and uh, the big dive stores and uh, run them. His service, his, uh, his, his service abilities, experience uh, is well, well known. Something a lot of people don't know is that guy's done an awful lot of filming in the Arctic, yeah, it's pretty neat. And other places too, but I'm particularly interested in the Arctic. So if you get a chance to come into Scuba 2000, Guy is almost always here. And you get a chance to talk to Guy and ask him about his underwater photography. You'd really enjoy that. So this is Guy, manager of Scuba 2000. And we're gonna run through a little scenario right now and, and uh, watch a student coming in. And I'll quickly explain in the background along with Guy what's involved in taking your scuba course during the COVID. Hello, welcome to Scuba 2000. Can I ask you before you step in, can you hide, uh, do your hands please? Can you disinfect your hands? Hi, welcome to Scuba 2000, how can I help you? I'd like to learn how to scuba dive. Do you? Well, you're in the right place to be able to do that. Awesome. Um, is it safe right now to scuba dive? Most definitely, yeah. Well, this is the right place to be able to learn. This is, everybody starts off basically learning in a swimming pool be able to learn how to be able to do the, just a basic theory behind diving and then we take you out on an open water scenario to be able to show proficiency in the skills that you've learned in the pool to be able to successfully do that in open water. This lady is a customer and wants to be a diver and uh, a guy of course is the uh, professional and so now we're going to go down uh, to the classroom. Okay guys, here we are now in, the, uh, in one of the classrooms, one of the Scuba 2000's fantastic classrooms, they're beautiful. Uh, everything that you need to teach. 
all the fancy projectors and so on. Anyway, this is their standard classroom. And I guess one of the things, Guy, you were mentioning earlier that has changed, for sure, is the fact that uh, you, you, you only have four students instead of eight. I know that we used to have eight students per class, but now there's four. Does that allow you to maintain enough distance? That's correct, yeah. They want us to be able to keep six feet between right. people. Yeah. So the only way we can really do that in the classroom right, is just having four people. So if we have a, a family, we can still maintain that social bubble and keep them close to each other. Right. But if we have four independent people, then we have the room in here to be oh, able I see to what keep them distance. Well, that makes sense because it's a family that lives together. They say mom and dad and two kids. Can you still have another three on top of that? No. Okay, so no, we can four only people max. Four is max. The family can sit together. And oh, so for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. makes it. Now, okay, and, uh, and of course, everybody's in masks, protective gear. And the instructor does this thing, but there's not a lot of instruction anymore. I know even as, as I was, it used to be, we didn't have all this stuff, right? No. Yeah. I remember slides. Yeah. A hundred years ago, you guys don't even remember slides, but we had a slide, but that was about it. The instructor did all the teaching, but now they don't so much anymore. Not so much. We still have probably 50% of the people that still want to do classroom so yeah, we yeah. have some e-learning that come in, yeah. and a very large portion of the of the classes we oh, have fantastic. still are full book right, right. that come. With with COVID, we're trying to push a little bit more uh, on the e-learning, so yeah, yeah. they're not so long in the classroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you obviously clean. Oh yeah. Give us a quick rundown. What, what do you do? This is a standard classroom. What mm -hmm. do you What do you do? Well, if, after each classroom is completed in here, um, then we have to we have to sterilize everything. So we have a special solution that we spray the, the tables, we spray the chairs, everything on here. Then, the, then it's usually left for about 10 or 15 minutes to kill the virus. And then we have wipes, and then we go down and we wipe the table and that all down uh. with it. And that's done between each class. If it's one classroom, it doesn't have to be done. It can go straight. For, for straight. I mean, it just classroom stays as it is for the duration of the day for that group of people. But if we have a second classroom come right. in here, then it has to, we have to about a half an hour to 40 minute downtime between classrooms to be able to properly clean and disinfect the facility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's not a, it's not a, it's, it's extra work. It's extra work, but it's yeah. it's not a big deal. No. No, no, it's just no. keeping it super clean. For probably, sure. Probably the stuff that we should have done all the time anyway. <laughs> but the COVID made it come home to us, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and and uh, the students wear masks. Optional. If they'd start off in a mask in in the classroom, right? If the instructor and everybody feel comfortable with it and the distancing is far enough, then yeah. they can take they'll yeah. take the so mask off to be good, able to keep the distancing big, so they can understand and see the facial facial facial. Uh, yeah. Movement of the instructor. Yeah, that's the one thing I hate about the mask. You can't see I'm smiling. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, now you had mentioned. Somewhere in there, you mentioned that when, you, when you, they come in, they do a COVID questionnaire. Yeah. That's the type of thing. Do you have a cough? Have you, have you, have you been to the United States lately? <laughs> those yeah. kind of, those it's kind a, of things. It's there. a standard, the standard questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, and it's usually set up for anybody that's in the facility for more than an hour. Right. If they're going to be spending the day with us, then we'd like to be able to have an, right. a little better idea of where yeah. they've been, who they've been with, and stuff like that. Yeah. That's signed and kept in their file. Right. Right, well, that's good. It covers you a little bit, and, and also, it, I suppose, it would help possibly to head off some problems. Yeah, possible yeah. problems. We have a, we have a uh, thermometer, a temperature um, reader here. It's uh -huh. not it's not mandatory at the moment to do it, but if somebody's not feeling up to snuff, then we have the the option to be able to test uh -huh. temperature and stuff uh -huh. like that to yeah. give us a better idea of what's happening uh -huh. also in the Neat. facility. Neat. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go to the pool. Oh, guy, look, I see you've got all your standard uh, uh, COVID stuff on here. Be mindful and things to check for and so on. So that's good before they go into the pool. You know, it doesn't hurt to have another reminder. No, no. We yeah. also made it so that they have to remove their street shoes before they enter in the pool because it helps minimize contamination from outside oh, yeah, on the yeah, pool yeah. deck. Yeah, good. Okay, all right. Let's go inside. Folks get to see our beautiful pool. All right, now you see what I mean when I said earlier about the Scuba 2000 pool. This is fantastic. The water is extra warm, clean, crystal clear, uh, and it's a beautiful spot. So uh, being able to come here and use this pool for refreshers, for a dive team pool night, training, of course, and uh, to try new equipment. Oh, yeah, it's great. So, all right, so here we are now in the pool. So we've come in with our four students. Okay, guy, you have to help me here now. Now, it used to be that the student, we, we supplied everything originally was scuba to the which was unique 
Most yeah. dive stores required uh, uh, the students to buy mass snorkel fins and even weight belts, which is really stupid, but yeah. there's reasons for that. Uh, but anyway, which it could be a three, a three hundred and fifty, four hundred dollar purchase. Well, when we started Scuba 2000 20 years ago, just to be controversial, which I was always good at, <laughs> I said supply everything. But you don't do that now, you were saying. No, we don't. Uh, due to COVID-19, for sanitary reasons, uh, the masks and the snorkels we no longer supply anymore. Right. And the customer feels a little bit more comfortable with that, knowing whose mouth it's been in, yeah, how yeah. it's been maintained and clean. We still supply the, the fins for them. We still supply the regulators and BCs for the program. Right, okay. Well, that's a good point, you know, because uh, uh, one of the reasons we would encourage people to buy their own masks and snorkels, and even when we supplied them, we encouraged it, was for that personal, uh, you know, nobody's used it. Now with the COVID, that's really important. It's really right? important so yeah. that's interesting. So yeah. you supply all the, now, the BCs and the fins, you know, you can clean them pretty easily. I see you've got your sanitizer and your rinse tanks here. What about the regulators? Because I know regulators really well. And you suck in and then you blow out and, you know, comes out and it stays in there. Yeah. What happens with them? We have a very, very strict protocol on cleaning the regulators. We used to have them just hanging in the back and people can go and pick up a regulator and do whatever they wanted with it. Now, the regulators are not here. We have numbers on the regulator. Uh -huh. uh, they are properly cleaned. We have a three-step cleaning process to be able to clean the regulator. It's maintained in the back. If a client comes in for a weekend course, the regulator is issued to them and it's their regulator for, oh. the, for the weekend. They, they don't hang it up, they hang on to it. Right. They still go through the cleaning process to help clean it. If they feel a little uncomfortable, again, we have the, the solution to be able to clean it with. And all we would do is just take the first and the second, the second stage and oh, just right in that second just stage. Clean that's what's important. Stage right so in it there, gets yeah. on the diaphragm. Oh, but that's this, good. This, this is this, under pressure. It's under it's pressure. Like yeah. a garden sprayer. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. It was designed to work with um, in restaurants and that. So it's, oh, a, yeah. it's food grade. Yeah. So it doesn't. Uh, I know what you mean. Yeah, toxic yeah, yeah. or hurt. So you leave it in for about five minutes and it kills everything that's in it. And then you right. just rinse it out with fresh water. Right. Now this is all done in the back though, not here. No, this is, is an additional one. This is maintained oh, in the classroom in here. Oh, so you can do it again area. if you want to. So if people feel a little uncomfortable and want yep. to be able to use it, then we can do that here also. Right, fantastic. And then uh, your washrooms, of course, your change rooms. You have beautiful change rooms here. I know I built them. Uh, you've really upgraded them nicely. And uh, what, what about social distancing? Because uh, the change rooms, when we built them, they, weren't, they were only for small groups. So the change rooms are only about 20 feet square. You can't have yeah. eight or nine people in no. there. Again, the way they've got it set up, we're only allowed four students here. And the way they, it works, you have two students here, an instructor there, and two students over there. Ah. And once they get in the water, and they get underwater, then social distance isn't a big thing. It, it's, yeah, so yeah, you yeah. don't have to worry about it. To go into the showers, if you've got a social bubble, if you've got the family, then the family goes into one ah, shower. Yeah. You don't contaminate both showers right. in it. If you have four independent people, uh, they have to go in one at a time. Right. So one will go in and shower and come out, then the next one will go in. So it, right. it does take a little bit more time, yeah. but allows people the privacy and the yeah, social so you distance. You just added that into, into the program. So instead of the program, say, starting at 9 and running till 4, now it might start at 8.30 and run till 5 type of thing. A little bit, but because you only have four people, ah, it, that's it, right. it, goes much, it goes much quicker. That's right. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> you're gonna, that's a good point, because I know we had classes of eight, and we do have a ladies and men's washroom, but if they're seven men and one lady, that means seven guys. That took a long time. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. maybe it's yeah, not yeah. that big a deal. And after the class is completed, again, it's just like the classroom. It's maintained the same people that are in there. But once this particular class is done yep. and goes in, if there's a second class to come in, there's got to be about a 30 to 40 minute time yeah, yeah. frame between. And the whole place has to be disinfected. Ah. So again, the, the showers wow. are sprayed down, the floors are sprayed, the walls are sprayed. The lockers are sprayed, the seating is sprayed. If they use the ladders there, the ladders are actually sprayed to be able to disinfect to make sure that nothing yeah, transfers yeah, yeah. over. So now, you, how do you remember all this stuff? Oh, there's a list in the, in the bathroom. Oh, that so we have so, a protocol you, that we have I, to follow. I, I suppose by now you've probably got it memorized. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. yeah one, two, three, four. Oh, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah, gosh. It's, it seems to me that it's safer going here 
to take a scuba diving course than, than it is going to Walmart. Did Walmart require, oh yeah, they do in Ontario because, of, yeah. but they didn't for a long time. You didn't no. have to have a mask on. No. And this sounds to me like it's safer here and a lot more fun too. And another thing people have been concerned about too is also is COVID transference to the air. With it, can we put it in it? And not really. I mean, it's, our intakes are up on the top, so there's no way you can Sucking cough it into out. the intake yeah, in it. Yeah. And with the compressors, the heat that the compressor builds up on the inside oh, yeah. actually kills COVID. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So there's not really any way to transfer the COVID into the yeah. scuba cylinder. Yeah, well, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, maybe I'll take a scuba course. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, there you go. There's some ideas. I know some of you are asking about uh, scuba stores, dive stores, and diver training in particular, because diver training is very hands-on. And so uh, we had a few minutes down here at, at uh, my good old Scuba 2000, and the guy happened to be in today, and uh, so we had a chance to chat and a little bit, and all of a sudden, Kevin, I think, said, hey, let's do a hygiene. How do you do a scuba course? So there you go. That's all scuba, I hear it's Scuba 2000 anyway. I saw you take a scuba diving course during the COVID, safely. There you go. Can't beat it. Talk to you soon. Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips.